evening, one and all. Welcome to Hobby Unboxed. Uh, let's see what we do here. Um, I was going to welcome uh, Russ, but uh, his family's over a bit, uh, so uh, he may join us later. In the meantime, let me uh, let me welcome all of you guys out there. Uh, Marcello, good to see you. Chris, Dave Krause, as always, thank you all for coming. Hey, Matt, good to see you. Tonight's going to be a fun night because I'm going to create a gamer's cabinet for board games. Uh, that's what we're going to work on tonight. So, uh, hmm. Uh, maybe I'll shave for the next show. Oh, well. Um <laughs> So, uh, yes, we're going to do a gamer's cabinet. See, now, here at home, uh, as I mentioned in some other past show, uh, here at home, my my uh, daughter, daughters, and, and stuff, we have a coffee table in the living room. It's got a shelf in it. It's pretty large, and it holds quite a number of... Uh, well, quite a lot of books or magazines or whatever. And and uh, we decided to put all our, you know, everything from Pictionary to Trouble to Monopoly, Stratego, you know, I can go on and on and on. But that's for that's for the other show. One of these days is when we'll do uh, games of the 70s and 80s, folks. But uh, I thought to myself, you know, this is this is an organized mess and I'd like to have someplace neat. Uh, to keep all these things. Uh, so I was thinking a nice cabinet, say possibly 16 by 16, something, uh, you know, 16 inches by 16 inches, maybe, maybe a little bit smaller, you know, or maybe a, a dual cabinet, say two foot wide by, uh, by, uh, by 16 inches deep, 14 inches deep. And however tall you want it. Imagine, if you will, that this cabinet has now. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of the cabinet. I'll eventually build one and and do a uh, after after the move and years from now. And I'll uh, and I'll be happy to show you guys all, all those things. But you guys pretty no much know how to put a bunch of pieces of wood together, put some wheels on the bottom and make a rolling cabinet and uh, put some wood uh, slats on the side to make some drawer slides if you will and uh that's the basic concept so the concept is and i'll get to the uh to the boards in a second so imagine if you have this cabinet let's say it's double wide so you can hold two sets of board games and most board games are roughly 12 by 12 um or 14 by 14 rather most most of them are 14 by 14. Uh, double check, measure your Monopoly board, and that's roughly what you can use. So then if you make the cabinet just a little bit bigger, you can actually recreate, which is what we're going to do tonight, recreate all your board games in one form or another on a nice quarter-inch plywood. And I'll give you two or three options to do that. And then each one... Each one, they don't fold or anything like that. They're they're one full piece. They slide in, and you have your little drawers where you have all your dice, all your uh, you'll have one drawer that'll have all your Monopoly pieces inside it. Again, we're all creative and we enjoy doing all these things. So you could either create a drawer and put all the uh, plastic pieces uh, in there from the actual Monopoly game, or you can create your own custom. Uh, pieces and again all you got to do is take out a drawer for monopoly a drawer for stratego you have a drawer full of dice you have a drawer with different um items different uh different uh what, what are the words uh aspects or whatever of each game the different tools of each game depending on how the game is played you'll have you can have a drawer with nothing but a bunch of game pieces in it, you know, and uh, and uh, how many times do you lose a game piece or two? Well, if you if you have a drawer with game pieces from multiple games, you're you're uh, you're going to have an excess of game pieces. But anyway, the whole the whole point is you put it all in one cabinet 
when the family's finished with it, the kids can, they, they know a place. It's all organized. They slide the board in. They throw the stuff in the drawer or however you like to do it, and, and you're done. Now, the key to this is creating the actual board games, the boards, uh, or rather I should say reproducing them uh, on uh, a piece of wood or something. Let me give you the easiest way. Right now, let's let's do the easiest way. The easiest way is to take a half-inch piece of, of plywood and uh, wrap it, or rather pocket, a, uh, a location that fits each board. So let's say the boards are various, you know, Trouble's a very small board, but Monopoly's a, a standard size. Uh, Parcheesi is just a little smaller than Monopoly. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Backgammon is backgammon's clearly, you know, smaller. Checkers, you could make any size, checkers and chess. So imagine, if you will, you have a couple choices, but we'll, we'll go into how to create the, uh, the board's the actual size boards in a second, if you want to do that, but there's an easy way, which I'll do that first, which is like I said, make a bunch of boards, 16 by 16, half inch thick, and just the depth of the, uh, the eighth inch that it takes to, um, to wrap it out, uh, the space for the monopoly board and hot glue, the monopoly board right onto the wood the, the Monopoly board will never close. It'll never be removed from there, and you'll have it in the wood. You can round the corners so you don't have any sharp edges, and uh, we'll show you how to do that right now. We'll do a quick one of those, and then we'll move on to uh, how to recreate those boards onto actual pieces of wood. In other words, uh, right now what I'm doing is dropping a board into a standardized size for our cabinet but in the future um, but we can also resize and recreate the boards redo them on wood in numerous different ways and we'll get to that in a second all right so let's uh let's go ahead and uh move on to sharing and share screen and here we go let's uh go with uh, v carve here and you'll i'll apologize for uh let me see if i can pop you guys up on the other screen so i can see the uh comments and that way i don't have to uh There we go. All right, great. Now I got you guys over here, so I don't have to uh, pop the chat out and give myself a thumbs up. That's always nice. <laughs> All right, see you guys up on the uh, on the chat room. Um, although, uh, for those of you on Facebook, I will be going back and forth because, uh, like Hitch and Matt, because. Uh, I have uh, YouTube up here. I got to get, uh, see, used to use our house. We used to use, we used to house our stereo equipment in such a wheeled cabinet. Yeah, those things. Let me tell you, wheeled cabinets are fantastic for numerous reasons. And I uh, and, uh, highly recommend everyone uh, in uh, that's just starting out in woodworking to stick everything on wheels. Uh, let's see. So we'll create a new file here. And the new file will be, Let's make it 16 inches by, uh, let's make it 14 by 14. You know what? 15 by 15. And it's going to be half an inch thick. And the reason I'm making it 15 by 15 is because I'm right now, I'm assuming a size of 14 inches by 14 inches for a standard Monopoly board. So let's say you have a 15 inch by 15. Let's say you have a 16 by 16 cabinet. And um, it's, it's a tight fit. But let's say you have, uh, okay, let's say you rabbited a bunch of slots. You didn't even bother with 
uh, one easy way to do this is is get a bunch of strips of wood and put them in between. But another easy way is just take half inch ply or three quarter inch ply and just wrap it. As long as you wrap it the slots evenly, you have your two sides, you have your back. In fact, all three sides, you can wrap them the same. Slap them together and, and you're practically done. But I'll let you woodworkers uh, enjoy that part of it. I'll uh, show you. Let me see now. We're going to create a rectangle. Since this is 15 by 15, the center is going to be at seven and a half, seven and a half. And the width is going to be 14 by 14. And we're going to radius. No, we're not going to radius this part of it. Okay, so I'll create this one. And then what I'll do is I'll take another one of these, but this one I am going to make it 15 by 15 with. Okay, I already. Hang on a second. Apply. Uh, let me uh, redo this one because I had the radius external corners on it by accident. I meant square, apply. And uh, this one here. I'm going to move it so the center is at seven and a half by seven and a half. It's going to be square and it's going to be 15 by 15. And apply. Okay, so we have our outside and we have our, our inside. Sorry, this is going to be radius external. Apply. There we go. So we have our radius external. This is just so when we move it around, um, uh, well, I can pretty much finish this off already, so let's go ahead and, and do the toolpath for this one. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this first one here, first we'll do the uh, the toolpath for the pocket. And we'll create, let's say that it is one eighth of an inch thick, a standard Monopoly board. And it is exactly 14 by 14, which is, you know, you guys are going to have to measure that part. But uh Okay, so we have our we have our eighth inch, we have our uh, our pocket. Let's calculate it, and there it is. Now we have the other one here, which is going to be a perimeter. I mean, rather a uh, an outside, and it's going to be cut to half an inch because that's the depth. It's going to be a standard uh, uh, profile. Calculate. All right, we're done with that. So let's reset preview and preview all tool paths. Now, what we basically did, although this is going to take a little bit because I used a very small bit on purpose. Give it a second, folks. In the meantime, let me look at, uh, yeah, second the wheels. Uh, uh, Chris seconds the wheels. Yeah, definitely uh, the wheels are a, a plus. All right, so we have, we have everything done here. Okay, so now you see basically what we have. This is where the Monopoly board, let me see if I can drag this up here. There we go. This is one of the... Uh, how am I going to put it? This is one of the boards, basically. Now, this is the simplest possible way you can do this. Why? Because all you have to do is measure all your boards and measure all your depths of, of your boards and just make sure that the board's height is flush with the wood here. And all of your boards are flush. Now, it, it gets a little annoying because uh, uh, let's say you have a game like Trouble the game is a lot smaller here. So that, that could be a bit, you know, problematic. But, okay, so here we have a standard board. You have your Monopoly board on top of it, glued onto it, and Stratego, well, yeah, Stratego board. And I'm not talking the pieces. I'm just talking the bo the game boards. All your board board games are going to be like Stratego and uh, Risk and uh, whatever other game you have. Glue it there, slide it in, in the cabinet, you're done. 
If you like, what you can do is here on the side, make a nice little label for it. You can go as far as recessing uh, uh, a little pocket here and, uh, you know, and, and, and rabbiting a little pocket and inserting a, a little wooden piece or, or inlaying uh, or anything you like uh, just to, to see the names of the games. So you got the, you got the general idea. All right. So that is the first part. The first part of this, um, the first part of this wonderful, uh, that, that, that is method number one method number. I'll, I'll give you the other, the next easier methods. Method number two is if you're lucky enough to have a large printer, uh, bigger than 14 by 14, then great. If not, uh, and let me bring Russ in on the call. Hey, Russ. Hey, How's everybody. Going? What's going on? I don't know how much you've been watching. Uh, I'm not. I just got here. All right. Well, in short, what I basically told him is like, uh, well, very, very, something very similar to what you have behind. Well, what looks like what you have, but you got a file cabinet behind you. That's but a big uh, tool chest. A big tool. Okay. A tool chest. Well, imagine, if you will, something roughly that size or smaller with, uh, say, uh, 32 inches wide, 16 inches deep, split into two columns with a bunch of slots. And uh, this uh, is what I, one of the ideas is, uh, this This is the simplest way to do it, is do a nice little around over here so they slide in nice and they don't hit you on the corners when you're, when you're, uh, when you're uh, uh, when you're playing the games, and then you just pop your Monopoly board and glue it right right in here, so you put them all away and and you're done for the day. So that was right that on. was the first one. The first one is the first one is super simple. Get a piece of half inch wood, make them all half inch slots, and just slide them in there. You're done. Yeah. Hello, Another. Why? Well, I, well, I got the minute. I'll tell it. Everybody, hello. Yep. I love listening to that dog. I hate it. <laughs> I know you don't like it. <laughs> you can't today, like it. Today? No, I do like it. I think that's a door. <laughs> I, I could just envision myself a little tiny dog biting on his squeeze toy. Exactly what he's doing, too. By and the way. then, you know, I, today it sounds more like a squeaky chair than anything else. A every time I move, I hear the noise and I go, this is me. <laughs> But anyway, uh, method number two is almost as easy, um, and that is taking your board, do just what I did in the beginning, except now this time you're going to use a quarter quarter ply is fine. And I don't know if you guys have ever worked with hodgepodge, uh, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, yes. or or anything of the sort. But if you have, it's a very simple simple procedure. Take your uh, since your boards are 14 by 14, roughly, most of your boards, then divide them into four. Divide them into four pieces and put some overlapping. So take a picture if you, if you want with your phone and, and, and use your, your, your programs to, uh, to align it and size it as best as possible. Or if you have a scanner, even better. You know, you, you'll have to do it in four bits, but there you go. And if you have a, a color copier, even better. You just mm. stick it on the color copier and copy four. So you've got four copies. Now, preferably, obviously, reversed because we're working with Mod Podge. But, um, but the, yeah, this show is hodgepodge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then now you take, your, you take your bits and pieces and go to a YouTube channel and find out how to use Mod Podge. But the, basically the way to do it is... You're going to be sticking the paper with the colored side down with the printed sign on a regular uh, print down and on your paper. And uh, you put the Mod Podge and then you wipe all the water off and, it, and then mm -hmm. you put another layer of it. It's wonderful. It's great. And you basically have wood with your board game on the actual wood. Yeah, that's, that's method right number two. Mm -hmm. Another method is. You could use photo paper and take your photo paper because photo paper is very, very resistant to, to water and things like that and put a nice uh, bead of contact cement 
on the boards and very carefully in the line again those four corners you're going to if if you're lucky enough to have a printer that can do it in one then or go to your kinkos and get yourself a on a wide format printer that does uh, you know 20 inches or 20 24 inches you can send them your file if it's not copyrighted or anything and and you print um, you print your piece stick it right on with contact cement or anything else and it's a simple matter of lacquer or clear epoxy on it, preferably clear epoxy, because you never know what the lacquer will do to the to per, the particular uh, ink that you used. And so it, that's it. Put a layer of epoxy. You just got yourself a nice, super hard, shiny, if you, if you did it real nice, um, uh, reproduction of a board. Mm -hmm. Another method is, again... Uh, I have I have access to uh, dye sublimation, so mm -hmm. I buy these white dye sublimation sheets. They're twelve inch by twenty four inch, so I, I can I have shears and I can slice them. Now you know, most of you don't have access to that kind of equipment, but if you did, or you can order those sheets, white twelve by twelve. If you have dye sub sublimation materials, then you can again you may have to do it in pieces. Unless you have a very wide format printer and you can mm -hmm. handle all of that. And then just hot glue or glue or contact cement, that metal aluminum board right on there. There are probably 10 other ways that I'm, that I'm not even going to mention that you can place an image on a board. That's great. Mm -hmm. Then last, and certainly not least, because this is... Well, this is not necessarily a CNC show, but today it is. So... Uh, as most days. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take and I'm and I'm going to look for let me look for while uh while you guys are waiting for me here. I'm going to uh monopoly board um I'm just going to grab just from anywhere again a uh, an image of a monopoly board. There we go. Editable monopoly board. I'm I'm just um there are many images online of all different types of of boards and uh and again scan yours for the best resolution and because you know the manufacturers of these things want you to buy it so uh but uh, assuming you've scanned it already, I just popped one off the internet just to just to show you. I'm going to what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and do a bit trace on a Monopoly board. So let's go back to the 2D view, and this time, rather than rather than doing the the same thing, uh, let me save this. Let me save it as a uh, uh, board. Game pocket, and then uh, all right. So we have board game pocket, and now what we'll do is I'm we're going to change this to uh, fourteen by fourteen because that's the ultimate uh, size of this, and it's going to be a quarter inch. And uh, so there, there we go. Yes, I know material thickness, blah blah blah. So we'll take this. Now I'm going to use the. Uh, I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use the, uh, the 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 curved one already. Oh, someone's angry. So oh, I'll use the. Bossy. <laughs> I use the curved one here, and we'll see what uh, how that goes. Uh, select the size. The size is 14 by 14. Apply, and there you go. All right, so. We have basically all I did was, and uh, let's see, uh, remove this thing and save as. We're going to save a new one. Board game, pocket, board game uh, carved. The other one's board game pocketed. This one's this is this is now the inside one. I'm going to actually, in fact, let me show you what what I got here. Preview all two. All I did was right now, just create 
the actual board. Hey, why didn't it go? Oh, let's try that. This there we go. All I did was create the board. The board has. Um, why isn't the board? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, it only showed two yeah, sides. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. External. Oh yeah, I know why. I, I definitely know why. Hang on a second. That's because I didn't recalculate. Uh, okay, point two five. There we go. Um. Close recalculate. I didn't recalculate the tool paths, and oh, uh, okay. I I no. That's why the bottom left corner just so happened right. to to. Um... All right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now we got all four corners. All right, so we got all four corners. This is basically a, a blank worksheet, if you will. Now, what I'm going to do with this blank worksheet is I'm going to take and insert or import the bitmap and it's going to be um yeah there it is on my desktop and i'm going to stretch it to the proper size why don't i just do it the easy way resize bottom left um it's going to be uh, 14 by 14. Oh, shoot. Let's try this again, shall we? 14 by 14. Apply. Let me move it. 200. And there's our uh, generic Monopoly board. Now, uh, obviously, we want to create a uh, Monopoly board from it. Now, there's multiple ways to do this, the easiest of which is just grabbing the bitmap and just clicking bittrace. <laughs> or rather, trace bitmap. I'm so used to the other program. So there's our there's our uh, bitmap. We, we, we can... Uh, let's see. Let's... Uh, it's it's color, but we're going to choose pretty much every color except the green. Let me let me see what we can choose here. We're going to choose these colors. Actually, no. All we got to do is just choose the black, or do we? Uh, yeah. All we got to do is choose the black. Uh, again, you're going to have to fiddle with which each with each one of these and uh, and and as as you need to. And I'll go preview. It looks perfectly fine. It looks fine-ish, but there's actual more to this. Hang on a second, because uh, the uh, the words are not there. Yeah, no words. <clears throat> yeah, that was it. it. Was this color? Well, again, you can, uh, I get, you know, black and white is probably easier, and then that way you can just. Uh... Ooh, way too much, way too much, way too the, you know. <sighs> Sometimes, folks, it's just <laughs> not that easy. Just takes tweaking. Yeah, and, and again, you may have to actually, um, go in there, and. Uh, not just tweak it, but you actually have to go in there and, and do all the all, all the little things yourself, you know, because obviously that free parking or whatever it is. Yeah. But the point is, uh, you're going to take and you're going to have a bitmap now of the thing. And what I would do is I would do a V-carve of the bitmap and... Uh, Calculate that, see what happens. Yeah, 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 I know. Oh, might have went the wrong. No, that's fine. All right, so then uh, reset preview, preview all toolpaths. Clearly, there's a lot of tweaking going around, but you've created yourself. <laughs> yeah, obviously, these two have got to go. Hang on, let me. Ah, uh, oh, they're missing those two pieces. Well, um, and yeah, let me just put. Let me just put those pieces in. P 
personally, what I would do is I would take and uh, just spend the oop, spend the time and recreate this uh, manually because uh, that would be probably the easiest way to do this. Is just manually go in and uh, and and fix everything up. Yeah, that uh, tool chest behind me, it's got uh, 14 drawers in it. Seven of them are wide enough that you can make those boards and stick yeah. them in there and have it. Yeah, even, I mean, even better. I mean, like I said, it's uh, the only issue comes when you have those pop matic games and things like that. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Um, you can get very creative, and I plan to, and I th this is one of the projects that I plan to do one of the first projects I plan to do after I'm after I you know have the shop built. So, in a matter of a year or two, you guys will see me hopefully uh, uh, cranking this stuff out. Let me see. Here we go. Preview all toolpaths, and uh, come on, you can do it. And oh, no, no, reset preview. Let's try this again. Oh, I know what happened. I didn't include them. There we go. All right. So uh, reset preview, preview all tool paths. So uh, these are the kind of things that uh, that uh, you're going to have a lot of different. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I would uh, I'd put all the different things in here. You could have either the kids or yourself uh, color in all the different colors. You could go. You can go. Again, depends on how much work you want to spend on these things. This could be, I, and I, I wouldn't call it a labor of love. I would call it uh, a project, plain and simple. It would be an extremely fun, fun project to do, detailed. Particularly if you have or are expecting grandkids. I don't know how often you'll play these games, but you know, I mean. Let's see. Here's another one you, you can do that, that will do real quick for you. But let me let me finish up with this one first. So you, you notice. OK, so you notice this one uh, again. I'm missing all the words. I've got I'm missing the community chest and the uh, and and the uh, chance, but uh, and all the other stuff. But uh, all those designs you can easily do uh, with with either with bitmap trace or you come in and you tweak everything. I would what I would do is I would come in and put a uh, I'll put in a uh, uh, a guide like this and then just move all these uh, points to the guides. You know, again, I, you'd have right. to make everything nice and neat, but that's one way to do it. There's 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 plenty, but that's probably the the easiest way. And again, that's just this game. Let's say you want and let me save this and uh, let me do a save as and uh, Mike just joined us. Oh, hey, Mike. Good to, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, all right. So let's say, okay, so you have a Monopoly game already. So let's say you want a, uh, something like a, um, and this one's going to be fairly easy. A really fairly easy one is a chess game. Let's say you want a chess game, uh, chess, checkers, whatever. Okay, so you have 14 by 14. Well, so what do you do? Well, simple. You go uh, selected objects size. You do 14. Oops, sorry. Let me see. Uh, I actually have to create one first. One of the things you can do is the following, is create a square box, say, uh, preferably with the box tool, all right, so let's create a square box, and we're going to create it. Uh, we don't, it doesn't matter if we do it uh, bigger or smaller. So let's just do a one by one, one inch by one inch box. Okay, create. All right, we'll grab our little box here. 
Let me get rid of this stupid uh, guide. All right, so we'll grab our little box here. Let me show you how to quickly, quickly create a checkerboard. You have your outside box, and for the purposes of this box, I'm going to make this one square. So let's go back to this one. Let's let's go back to square. So now it's 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 this one is going to be square. So it'll hit you. You know, maybe you want to round over the very tip. That's fine. But right now it's square. Now here you go. We're gonna we're gonna do. Um, one inch by one inch, we're going to do an eight by eight, um, an eight by eight grid. All right. We're going to group the copies and there's going to be a gap in between them. Say, I don't know. I guess I want a, a eighth of an inch is fine. So point one, uh, no, let, let's just do point one. Because I'm going to enlarge it. I might shrink it. I don't know. We'll see. So or whatever. Copy. Boom. Okay, yeah. I was going to enlarge it. Good. So now we, we've made our grid. All right. Well, our grid is now going to be... Now we have the whole grid for the checkerboard. This is an easy way to make a checkerboard, which is... Yeah, first, let me move it to X position 0.125. I position 0.125, apply, and now all we got to do is stretch it to, um, this is 14 by 14, so we're going to go 13, 875, 13, 875. So here we go. We're going to go uh, to resize. We're going to enlarge it to uh, 13 point, uh 13.75 because that that uh, that gives us one quarter less and then it'll be an eighth inch over here and an eighth inch eighth inch on all sides so 13 point I mean I, if I did the math in my head correctly this should give us the the one inch I mean the the little thing now there's two ways of doing this okay we could go right now and choose everything. And do a V-carve, which, voila, our V-carve is uh, reset preview, preview all toolpaths. We've just created a V-carve, so that means there's our checkerboard. There's one way. Uh, a second way of doing it, again, you, you're going to have to paint all the black, black and white figures. But the second way of doing it, and this is the way I would prefer for this kind of board. And that is the following. Um, first of all, let me let me get rid of this. All right. And uh, let me get rid of this. Now we're going to go back here. And we're going to just choose this. And we're going to do a pocket. And, you know, we'll just make it. Uh, 0.0675, whatever. Calculate. Uh, okay, what did I do? Material thick. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, hang on a second. Start depth zero, cut depth. Why is it giving me... Let's see what it's doing here. Okay, so let's try this again. Pocket. Yeah, 0.125 is fine. Calculate. Okay, good. All right, so it, it cut that, and let's go back and just do that. Well, we don't have to do the outside because the outside's already done. So um, here we go, folks. Preview. Reset preview. Preview all toolpaths. Give it a second. And I'll go to the... Uh, there we go. There we go. And this is another way to do a checkerboard. Again, it's it's it depends whether you want to. I mean, you could actually color in all the every opposite uh, thing. It's it's still a checkerboard, and these are basically the lines in between them. And now, now you, the the problem with this is you can't slide the pieces back and forth, but it'll hold checkers really well, and it'll keep it from sliding around and falling out. Again. There are so many different ways to do these things. And uh, 
you're going to find that you have different things like, uh, for instance, the uh, you can be extremely creative. If, if you wanted to go the half-inch route, like I was talking about at the beginning of the show, either half-inch and drop a, a piece in or just make all your boards half an inch. I don't know if you want to go that thick, but if, if you, may, you, you could do a lot with half inch or have a mixture of both. With a half inch board, you can, for instance, in um, in Parcheesi, uh, in, in Parcheesi, you can have a, a little area in the middle pocketed. You could put all the drawings on the top, but you could have a pocketed area in the middle where you could, you know, roll your dice. You know, yeah. it's it. You know, there's one option uh, for something like trouble. What I would suggest is the following. Okay. I would suggest make a quarter inch um, for something like trouble, a quarter inch 14 by 14 for the base. All right. And then see trouble is smaller than the regular board. Yeah. You, you can easily do a, say a 13 by 13 or a 12 by 12, just enlarge the, the board. And, if you guys remember Trouble, there's a pop -a matic in the middle. Now, mm -hmm. I'm sure you creative and destructive minds <laughs> can easily rip that open and build a nice little wooden platform for it and, s and glue it right inside the, the middle of, a, of our new wooden board. But what about the pieces? Those pieces are, if you remember the pieces, they look like pegs. They basically look like pegs with the feet from those uh not weeble wobbles the weeblos uh, the w what are those play school it's a cylinder with a cap on it but mm -hmm. the bottom half of the cylinder is thinner so it slides into another uh, uh, uh another cylinder if you guys can remember it's a clear board and all that well yeah there's I no reason all the time with my grandkids there's no reason you can't Cut a whole bunch of holes, particularly with a beautiful CNC machine. Cut all those holes to the perfect fit or, or just a little bit bigger because wood tends to expand and, and, and shrink. That'll fit those pieces. And you, could just, uh, and you could just cut all the way through on either a quarter inch or a half inch board, all the way through, glue it onto that uh, board. And in fact, that new board that you glue, you could you could created in a way where it holds the pop matic down in it uh, if you so choose and you've got yourself a trouble board I mean uh, you know and uh, and and you could do something similar with life I mean life is I mean if uh, the game of life if you don't mind you know tearing apart some of your games um, because to tearing apart to standardize them, the game of life has that little bridge. Why can't you glue that bridge onto the, to the, to the piece of wood? You know, uh, it also has the spinner. Again, that spinner fits in between. If you guys like I have ever taken one of those games apart, it's there's basically the cardboard piece. And all it is, is a plastic piece that has a lip on it that slips into two layers of cardboard the base of the cardboard of the board and the top one that 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 has all the printing on it mm -hmm. so you know and uh, and again with those you could also choose uh, a mixture of both these ideas with the game of life you can cut your your large board your board just to the right size pocket it and drop the whole game in there and you don't have to mess anything up and then with other games like checkers or backgammon or or or, or whatever or mahjong, you, you could create your own custom boards. You can even create one. Uh, you can create one that slides out and holds, uh, like a mahjong, a Ouija board, what a Ouija board, whatever <laughs> board game. Ouija's not much of a fun game. I don't know. I think I played it twice in my life, and I, <laughs> and I didn't get it, and I didn't enjoy it at all. Like this is the most stupidest thing I ever saw. Hmm. But anyway, uh, yeah. So, folks, I, I got to tell you, you know, that's uh, 
And so oh, I see Mike there. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see that Mike joined us. So, um, so that's pretty much it for 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 the for these. I mean, I'll 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 go on because uh, throw in some more ideas again. For those of you that missed the beginning, imagine if you will a rolling rack. You don't need more than one, uh, but you can have a dual rack if you have a lot of board games. But personally. I mean, I don't think we have more than 15 or 20 games. Uh, and if they're a quarter inch each and you got three quarters, that's that's 15 or 20 inches. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can probably fit 40 games, particularly if it's a if it's a taller. But let's say you want it smaller because the kids will reach it. Whatever. Uh, well, actually, no. Keep the drawers nice and tall out of the way so they don't uh, swallow that stuff and they don't yeah. and they and they don't start goofing around with it but uh, again a lot of these a lot of the board games will fit in there but it's not just about board games you can create these little slide in and slide out drawers with a special box on them that have um say uh, uh um there's there's a dice game that we play. Well, Yahtzee is another one. You know, you can have you can have Yahtzee in there. You can have your whole Yahtzee game. You can have uh, you, you know whether it's Pictionary or Yahtzee. You can have you can have uh, imagine if you will a thin one or two inch tall box. Mm -hmm. With a lip on the bottom going out to the to the full fourteen inches, but the boxes say twelve by twelve or whatever, and you know you put a little uh, hole and a and a and a piano hinge and and open up uh, whichever way you want to do it. Open up the the box and you have all your Yahtzee stuff, all your Pictionary, you know, on different in different ones of these. Each one is labeled in the front, so you see. Ah, let's play Pictionary. Let's play uh, whatever we want to play. And uh, and you can you can anytime your family gets a game, you can uh, you have a little project on your hands to add it to the to the to the game uh, rack. You know this could this could be uh, this could be a fun project. And likewise, when they get older or whatever, I don't know. Uh, most of the games nowadays, the 360 games and all those uh, Xbox and and. Mm -hmm. uh, and PS4, they're all they're all online. But uh, I know my daughters have a bunch of uh, CDs, and sometimes they go to GameStop and turn in a CD and and take out a CD and stuff like that. So uh, you can easily create uh, amongst the uh, the cap, make that dual cabinet. It's big enough for all your board games and all your TV games. You know whatever but i'm just uh, i'm just throwing out a bunch of a hodgepodge if you will of of uh, a modge podge of ideas <laughs> but uh but those are those are uh it's it's uh, when i when i thought that thing up i go you know what why is this such a mess this this game tape this game thing of mine you could yeah. even go as far as to create if if you are so willing and if if it floats your boat if you're going to create a coffee table, like in my case, where I had a coffee table, you can easily put really nice drawers or a, or a couple of uh, doors where you open the doors and you can slide your games in and out. You have room for a lot of games, depending on, again, how many games you have and how big your, your, your coffee table is. But uh, it's nice. I mean, think about it. You've got a full gaming center for board games right in one coffee table or in one whatever table you know mm -hmm. and uh and there, there's there's some ideas i'm trying to think can you guys think of some other games that uh might not fit a standard let me see let me pull up a few board games here just as we have a few minutes so uh, board games um yeah, i mean we can you can go you can go all out with a lot of different uh things i mean uh, you could even go as far as here. Look at let me let me show you guys this picture because this is just absolutely fantastic. Well, and just, this as will... a, just as a, a point of reference, 
Mm -hmm. You can still make a uh, uh, the the like the sliding chest like that, like you're talking about with yeah. the multiple drawers, and and uh, the board games that you already have. You can just open those and throw them in there. And uh, right, you could you could always do that too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Either way, if, depending on how much work you wanted to put into it. Now let me tell you, if you want to put this much work here, watch this one. You're gonna love this. So if you want to put, let me uh, see here. Uh, share. Oh, nope, nope, nope. That's not share. Come on. And uh, share and uh, share screen. All right. Let's say you want to do something like this. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> now that's some. Okay. Now, just so you know, folks. Just so you know, there there is a way, and you guys can, you guys can look it up, but. Um, I have done, um, I have done gold leaf. There, there, there are wow. certain, there are numerous techniques to printing gold leaf directly on wood. You know, from um, the, using a, la a standard laser printer. You know, and and <laughs> and, a, and an iron, mm -hmm. and and some special uh, paper. And, uh, but anyway, uh, this, uh, I mean, this game is, this Monopoly game is fantastic. I mean, you know, it's really, really classic. Again, you don't have to have colors on these things. I mean, obviously the colors shine out here for the, uh, you know, for the, for the different properties, but that's it. You don't really need the, the red of the go or the, or the blue of the free parking or the orange or red of the, um. Uh, uh, I mean, the go to jail blue or the right. You don't need all those colors, and and you don't even need the blacks of the uh, of the train. But you can also do this all in black, very easily if you had a laser engraver, <laughs> mm -hmm. even easier. But uh, but I mean, this is a very very relatively. I mean, it's simple for us. It's not very com. It's time consuming. Yes. Uh, it would be a fantastic project, you know, considering these people charge, uh, I don't know, what do these people charge? These people charge $230 for that, for that little game, you know, now the bottom part of that game could also be, you know, uh, or, or you could actually have it. So the top part is a little recessed in or better yet. Make them both 14 inches so that fits into two slots. I mean, you guys saw what I what I was uh let me just show you the, the thing again. Let's say for instance, um Hello Paul. Hey Paul, how's it going? Let's say for instance you build a monopoly set like this. Now remember there's drawers not only here, but there's you know, no, I, I guess there's just one on the other side. Well, whatever. But you have, you can build custom drawers for the banker, custom drawers any way you want. These two lips right here on the left and on the right, I mean, the, the, you could make it so that fits perfectly in, in two of the, uh, rails of your, of your, uh, cabinet. Right. So now you have a really fancy Monopoly board, you know, and, and again, you could do that same thing with multiple uh, boards. I mean, it, there's no end to what you can do. But uh, like I showed you here earlier, with the uh, with the different uh, with the different boards, with the different designs, everything you can do it in uh, any every way from from uh, dropping a, an actual board in. To hot mod podging a printed one, to die sublimating one, mm -hmm. to actually engraving it and painting it yourself. I mean, it's 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 up to you all the different ways you can create or recreate a standardized board game to fit in a cabinet of your choosing, of your building, so you have every single board game that you have at home. All the way down to your Yahtzee and your and your uh, what's that other one? There's another game. There's another uh, you know uh, 
Boggle. See, now there's other games like Boggle that's small enough and, and certain travel games. Put them in a drawer. I mean, there's no reason why you can't, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole point of this is so you eliminate those those boxes uh, that are all different sizes because that's yeah. what frustrates me. The Pictionary box is this thick and this short and this fat and this long. And then you got another one, which is standard. And then the Monopoly game is, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, well, it seems like a long board, but the Stratego, the Risk, the, uh, all of those are just as long, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so, yeah. And again, uh, as long as your game pieces fit, make your boards a little smaller if you want them. Make your boards a little bigger. It's, it's, your, it's your design. And with that, hopefully, folks, you'll have uh, a nice project for you guys to do. Uh, for this week tonight's uh 10 p.m show will be on computers we're going to look at the computers from the 70s and 80s basically from uh you know from the first uh, uh oh my god my, my mind went blank uh heath kits <laughs> from the heath kits and then and, and those all the way up to the uh all the way up to well the 80s that would be pretty much max uh and and some pcs uh, but uh, uh you know here's the funny part because it's 70s and 80s i don't have to include windows 95 <laughs> <laughs> i could stop at giving mac all the kudos for uh. for the for taking the osx uh operating system uh um yeah we had uh, uh, for that what yeah was it? 3.1 maybe around that time? 3.1 3.1 might have been around that time, come to think of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, a year or two after the Mac came out, uh, let's see, in, in 86, I think they might have. Let me see when, when uh, now that you've said it. Because uh, it went from DOS 6.2, I think, to Windows 3.0 maybe. When and then, did uh, Windows come out? There we go. 85 that was that was the original windows and mm -hmm. then let me see when windows 3.1 came out uh 92 <laughs> oh, <we're out>. <laughs> <laughs> they missed it <laughs> yeah 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 windows uh i didn't even have windows in, uh until i hit 3.1 yeah, here's the thing with Windows, that. the original Windows. I'll never forget the original Windows. The original Windows, you had so many people that uh, they look at the trash can and say, do you want to delete this? And then they drag stuff to the trash can. And they wanted to get rid of a program. That's not how you done it. And they would and they would drag <laughs> the, the, the icon to you the garbage. the icon gone, but that was it. The icon was only a representation at the right. time. Mm -hmm. It was not connected to it in any way, shape, or form. Everything was an alias. Or uh, what do you guys, uh, in Windows world, is it called alias also? I, I never heard that term. Okay, alias alias is the Mac version of a pointer icon. Uh -huh. In other words, in other words, right now I can have an icon. I, I can have a I can have a, the actual hard drive that I open up, mm -hmm. but I can create an alias which will mm -hmm. look like the hard drive. It'll be a hard drive icon, mm -hmm. but it'll have this nice little like an arrow, like a, hey, it points to this. And I can make a whole bunch of them and stick them everywhere in my file. So anytime I ever want, I double click on it and I, and I go right to my hard drive or mm -hmm. a file or a folder or something like that. Yeah. That's an alias. In Windows, I forgot what it's called. But I'm sure uh, somebody will enlighten me out there. I can't remember what it's called. Been too mm, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Windows... Equivalent, equivalent of alias. Uh, alias is in window. Creating an alias in window. Uh, I don't know. It, it it actually says creating an alias. What is an alias in Windows? Alias can be set at the command prompt. Okay, they don't they don't have them. Well, it's funny. Anyway, uh, yeah. So bottom line is uh, tonight is going to be computers, computers, computers. Next week, folks. Next week at ten p.m., we're going to have an interesting show because we're going to review as many 
as many Easter eggs or references to the eighties that I could that I have found in the movie Ready Player One. There are well over four hundred. It'll make for a full show, and there's a lot that you never would have guessed. Never would have guessed. I mean, they've got stuff in there, and it was so funny because I was looking at the show the other day. I I, I watched the uh, I watched um, hello Frankie. I watched hey Frankie. I watched Ready Player One, and then I actually saw two or three YouTube videos on Easter eggs in Ready Player One. And one of them had them all listed. It was like 500 Easter eggs. And of the 500, there were only three, three that I did not recognize. That that uh, I, I don't know if I should be proud of that because that labels me as one <laughs> hell of a nerd. Uh, because uh, I was aware of every, I mean, everything from everybody knows the Rubik's Cube. Mm -hmm. uh, do you all know uh, the gun from Aliens? Do you all yeah. know uh, the um, uh, uh, many of you know the ship from Firefly? Yep. You know, things like that. Do you all know the uh, obviously many of you that saw the th those of you that saw the big robot. That's the robot from from uh, um, uh, Iron, uh, Iron Robot. Oh, there, yeah. There's there's a movie called the, the Iron Giant. The, the movie called yeah. the Iron Giant. Yeah. Where there was a robot, it's funny. It got dented on the head. It was really cool, you know. Uh, it's a great, it's a great cartoon. It's a great, great classic, sci-fi ish. And uh, a lot of those, a lot of those. Uh, I mean, the genre, the the movies, everything from from uh, you know the uh, all the movies that were in the playing in the theater. I've seen every single one of them. The ones that were in the in the in the in the backgrounds. I mean, these these people. I mean, whew, wow. Talk about bored out of their skull or, or, or I don't want to say no life because I'm watching them. So if they have no life, we have no life. So but, but the bottom line is they they go through a, with a fine tooth comb through every single little bit of of uh, practically every frame. And uh, in fact, a lot of those guys, I'm, I'm watching the new uh, Loki show and uh and and I'm and I'm really enjoying it. And then I'll go and I'll watch one of these YouTube guys or five or six of them explain all the, the Easter eggs that I missed. And I go, oh my god, I didn't see that. Oh my god, I didn't see. Oh my, you know hmm. why? Because they're 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 playing the show at one tenth speed, looking and staring at every single corner. Yeah. But now with the technology and the HD as we have it, and with those animators from from Marvel and from Disney. They just they go all out and they know that we're doing this, so they embed those things as deeply as they can mm -hmm. on purpose. It's 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 fun. It's fun I to find them. Actually, never watched Ready Player One. You have never. I I I've never I will. Watched uh, it. Uh, I've seen it and I've I've saw my list, but I hadn't got to it. I will. I will. Uh, you you definitely gotta. In fact, watch it and then and then join me on the show next week because. Uh, <laughs> Because because uh, there's so many things. I mean, it's like uh, you know they they have a couple references to Tab. They have some old drinks that uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I mean, there's just so many, so many different references uh, mm -hmm. from from the DeLorean to they even have the Griswolds family car from Vacation. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, it's it's in there. Oh my god! It's in there. How it's incredible. Christine. Shit? Remember Christine? They got yeah. Christine. Wow. I mean, you want to talk cars. They, they got the A-Team truck. <laughs> They've got every single car that you can possibly. There was a commercial once, which was really cool, very recent, or a Super Bowl commercial or something, where they had a bunch of these old, you know, they had the Ghostbusters car, and they had the mm -hmm. all these old iconic cars. Drove drove around in and out of a drive-in or something. I don't even remember the commercial, but I remember. Oh my God, it was great! It was like a nostalgia a flood of nostalgia. <laughs> Every single one of those cars and more are in Ready Player One. It's just nice. that densely packed with mm -hmm. with eighties and some sixties and seventies references. I mean, incredible, incredible, <laughs> you know. But uh, but anyway. So, folks, thank you all for joining us, and I'll see you again 
uh, next week we'll do another uh, fun project. We'll come up with something and uh, and uh, keep those C's and C's running. Hopefully you stocked up on wood when it was cheap because yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh, Nobody saw this coming. <laughs> look, you might as well enjoy the show now and make a list of all the stuff you're going to do when the wood goes back down and just <laughs> relax because I know you're not going to be in the shop cutting with the prices the way they are now. I hear that. So I know I'm not. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Have a uh, fun week. And uh, God bless everyone. We'll see Good night. you, folks. Hey, man, you got me live, as, live at five. And we're still live. It was the other button. Yes. <laughs> Oh, off screen. Good to see it again. Hey, <laughs> see you, Andrew. <laughs>